Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, economic prosperity or the end of a traditional way of life. Construction of a gas pipeline divides the Irish village of Rossport. Richard O'Donnell documents the struggle in his award-winning film, The Pipe. He shares his insights with Earth Focus correspondent Miles Benson, coming up on Earth Focus. That's what they did at the beginning. They came telling us what they were going to do. They never asked us at any stage for permission. The more you see wrong being done, the more angrier you get. We wouldn't be doing this if we thought it was just a, a noble cause and a heroic failure. It's pretty much forcing everybody's hand. I have a right to be here. This is where I've been all my life. If we don't act now, we'll regret it forever. I have an awful lot at stake here. Look, yes. there's no sense to this, and you know that. It'll never be the same, Mike. It'll never, never. It's going to, it has a mark left in the community that will never be healed. I'm going nowhere. The negotiation is over. The rule of law has to be implemented. You could only see danger. This is Chen's law. Blood cops, blood money. You have to play to make criminals out of us ordinary people. They won't clear us something. Leave that area. This is my area. It's the sadness who that gets to you. My jaws are going to be bullied. Your last chance to show that we are reasonable people. Do you think that I'd let a shell worker onto my property? I feel you're being watched every move you make. Never. Never. Silts. I don't try this in his own. This could go on forever. Irish film director Richard O'Donnell spent more than three years in Rossport, Ireland, documenting the struggle of a community pitted against a corporation, the state, and itself. He shares his insights. Richard O'Donnell, you've made a film about a small group of farmers and fishermen who stood in the way of a huge oil and gas development company. How did you get involved in this? About five years ago, I was, um, I was working as a news cameraman. And I, I was living with my uncle, who's a farmer in the west of Ireland, on the shore of this beautiful bay called Broadhaven. And Shell Oil had found gas about 50 miles off the coast, and they wanted to bring it in through this bay, um, through farmland, through fishing grounds, into an inland refinery, nine kilometers inland. And the, the government signed off all permission to Shell without consulting with the local people. And the, the farmers stood their ground and they went to jail for three months. And there was huge protests over this and there was, you know, there was an uproar locally. So I came on the scene a year after they'd been released from jail when the government uh, sent in a huge force of police, 200 police, to force work back into the refinery. Over time I realised that the media weren't portraying the story properly. And people I had known to be ordinary decent members of the community, I found were being criminalised through the media and kind of castigated as bullies and thugs and even been, you know, said that they were terrorists, which is blatantly untrue. We're not supposed to come down here with a tractor now and take sand or take gravel off the shores because it's protected from Europe. So that's what I can't understand, like. I mean, why isn't that law there for Shell? But the story just became more and more incredible and the character is so interesting. And away from the glare of the media, this incredible story of the disintegration of this small community and this David and Goliath story of this very small community versus a big oil company just unfolded in front of my eyes. What were they afraid of? What was the scenario that they thought would unfold? Should a pipeline rupture occur, even though the chances were very, very small, the consequences would be incredible. And the potential for for accident in the refinery would mean that these people would be susceptible to toxins. Their, the drinking water reservoir, which is a lake, is in the catchment area of the refinery. The flashpoint of the conflict was when they actually sat down in the roads and blocked the traffic of the construction trucks and heavy equipment. And when they took fishing boats out into the water and uh, got in the way of the pipe laying ships. Correct, yeah. The local people, they were never against the gas. They were just against the way in which it was being done. 
they'd always maintained that it should either be, be done at sea or done on the coast. And when the oil companies, backed up by the government, refused to recognise that fact, and when they manipulated the planning processes and they manipulated the laws of the country, people were no other choice but to physically put themselves in front of the, the pipeline workers or in, in front of the, the world's largest pipeline ship, the Solitaire. So they felt that was a last resort. But they always left the door open for, for dialogue and they always tried to very cleverly use the law on their side, despite being knocked back so many times. And you know, it, the kind of high point of the scene, you have this incredible scene where you have the world's largest pipeline vessel escorted by our own navy coming into the bay and you have this small crab boat, Pat Chief Adonis crab boat, going out to, to face down this ship. It's incredible. But just the courage and the, the sheer determination of these people, is just, it's an inspiration. You are committing an offence. They're about to commit a criminal offence. Come on, do your duty. Do your duty. Who are you taking advice from? Shell or the government? Go back. Is it Shell or the government? Go back there. My path, my livelihood. My livelihood. I'm not leaving no area. And at a time in Ireland where, you know, we have a, a, a political and a, an economic crisis, and when the leaders of our country have put the resources of the state at the behest of very powerful private interests, I think these people serve as a, a kind of an inspiration to people both in Ireland and in communities, communities all around the world who are suffering because of this. These people were offered payments. Was the money not enough or was no amount of money going to be enough? It's not about money. It, it never was. It's about people living in health and safety where they want to live and carry on their way of life as they had for generations. Uh, and to be in, in tune with, with their own environment. The company has nearly completed the project, but the people haven't given up? No, I, the, I mean, the people in Rossport, they're, they're very true to what they believe, and they've believed that this project, in the way it's configured, has been wrong from the start. And they've, they've had huge vindication at times from the planning board, from experts, and they, they will continue to believe that, even if the project is finished. So I think the message of the film is that you have to sit down at the very, very start of this and look at solutions, get everybody on board, and then it will benefit everybody, including the developer. Mr. O'Donnell, thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.